ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all hear me. Yes. I'm your, I'm your surprised speaker. And, uh, well, I have some surprises for you also, uh, hopefully. But while this is being set up, let me uh, tell you a little bit, a word, about the title of my uh, presentation today. If you kindly look at the um, handouts, or yes, you see it here too, I'm going to talk with you about quality of experience. This is not a very known word. It's quality of service that is used usually. Although I do not like to be against the, the majority, I don't like quality of experience, uh, quality of ser service. I like more quality of experience. And there are many reasons for that, and I would like to share with you one of them. Quality of service, by definition, sits you at the place of the service provider. Service. However, what really matters is the experience that the end user will have. And if you want to do a good business, you have to learn your customer experience and give him a quality experience. And that's why, at least one of the most important reasons, I would like to talk with you about quality experience rather than quality of service, although a word is a word. And if we have the same understanding, then everything is fine. What I'm going to do also is to have a little bit of an original analysis and look into quality issues. But in order to do that, I would like to talk about communications with you. That's what we are all about. And that's why we are sitting here. We are interested in communication and quality of communication, of course. So I would like to see with you a little bit how in past, present, and future, communications is going to be evolved. And I would like to see it actually from a very, very maybe different angle that you may or not agree with. I hope you will, because otherwise the rest of the, the, uh, the my talk will be a little bit uh, of, 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 of less interest to you. And through that, I will, of course, talk about quality metrics and challenges in quality metrics in conventional and in new media. Let me start as a good professor with the definition. I'm sure you, because of your background, because of the uh, business you are in, or the research that you are doing, you all have a different, maybe close, but a different definition of communication. Here is one. Communication, in fact, has always been about sharing experience. Now, this experience can be real. It can be imaginary. In fact, if we go back to the early times of, the, of our ancestors, but really early ones, the cavemen, they were communicating, maybe not in a very good language, but they were, you know, had gestures, they were using maybe some words, and they were drawing. They were trying to explain to others how the hunt went on, and how dangerous or brave they were, right? Sometimes maybe they exaggerated, exaggerated. It wasn't even true. That was imaginary, right? But they wanted to put the listener in the same situation and the same experience that they lived, if they really lived it, or they wanted the listener to live in. The modern communication of today that seems very sophisticated, in some ways, is not any different, in fact from the very early types of communication, cave drawing or, or storytellings around the fireplace. It's about exchange of experience, sharing of experience. And of course, there has been many evolutions and revolutions in communication. 
This country, Japan, has played a very important role in some of them. <coughs> Evolutions, I define it as improvements in terms of quality of experience of a given modality. And you know, you could agree that maybe black and white television was a new type of communication. It became color. The sound became stereo CD quality. It became HDTV. It will become 3D maybe in future, stereoscopic and so forth. These are all the same old modality that are becoming richer and richer. This would be some sort of evolution. There has been some revolutions. In revolutions, in terms of quality of experience, you add new modalities or new dimensions. Maybe mo mobile communication is a good example. It's this idea of anytime, anywhere. And I, my phone doesn't work here, so I <coughs> really miss that. I cannot be reached anytime, anywhere, and cannot reach people anytime, anywhere. This is a new type of experience, richness of experience. It doesn't really matter how you would classify as an evolution or a revolution these communication stages. I have tried here to give you a few examples. Storytelling and cave drawing, we talked about it. There were some others, books and written press, you know? When you were reading books or you read uh, some written press, sometimes it's a story of something that happened, some prime minister met some other people and some things happened. You imagine that, right? the rest you imagine. Yeah, not everybody imagines the same. If there is a picture taken, a photograph taken of this event, you can imagine better, right? And you can, you know, if there is a movie, you can imagine better and better. It's as if you were actually there. Now, which one of these is evolution, which one of these is revolution? Doesn't really matter that much. Recently, we talk about internet and mobile communication. These are the two most recent trends. And they are even merging. They have, in some cases, even merged. The question would be, when we talk about quality, of experience, what will be the next new experience? Let me try to spend some time on that. There are